What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session, with today's showcase looking at the brand new seasonal weapon called Cryophysia 77k, and also the new warlock aspect called Glacial Harvest, which isn't so new if you play the Hunter or Titan. The new season has offered some really amazing exotics that aren't broken or OP, but very simple in design, and offer you a big payoff once you activate them. One of the exotics I will cover is the new exotic sidearm, which is the second stasis based weapon to be introduced in game, and show you the wonderful synergy it has with any stasis build you have in mind. Playing around the exotic, I found that its base form is okay when up against mid to low level enemies, but it is terrible up against larger and bullet sponged enemies, which of course makes sense since sidearms aren't the best DPS to use against bosses. However, its exotic ability that allows us to freeze enemies is what really defines the weapon as a whole, and like many stasis abilities we have, its exotic ability will work alongside whatever aspects of fragments we have. So I've given it a thought, and pretty much came to a conclusion that the best way to make the exotic work really well for whatever content you decide to use it in, is to basically build it around a close quarter fighting style, and a subclass that heavily focuses on strong ability spam. And here we are, the Warlock's Shadebinder class with its specific aspects have proven to be the best combination to go for when playing with it, considering how much stasis spam will be going on. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. The subclass we'll be going for is the Shadebinder for the two aspects it offers. We have the Ice Flare Bolt aspects which allows seekers to appear and track multiple enemies, and then we have the Glacial Harvest aspect that will reward the stasis shards that will regenerate our melee energy every time. Both of these aspects will correspond with our sidearm and also the exotic armor in use, which is the Claws of Ahamkara. Just like the build we did back when the whole stasis class was revealed, we're going to be doing a similar version to that one with a few changes of course. Instead of us relying on Monte Carlo for more melee charges, we will instead use just the sidearm and Glacial Harvest aspect which will both drop us a ton of shards for us to collect and build back into a melee. The idea I had in mind was to utilize the Cryophysia freeze charge attack to stun enemies, and then once we get them destroyed, my ice flare bolts will kick into action and freeze whoever else is nearby, and thus net us a wide amount of shards in the making. At the same time, my melee can be used when I'm not using my sidearm's special attack, and either way you look at it, it only takes one frozen enemy to cause a large change reaction, and the rest is history. Utilizing the coordination of the two, we can in theory have a near unlimited freeze covered as long as we have enemies around, and just basically keep up the method that we are currently going with. While the aspects will be doing the work, we then have our fragments in the background that will provide a buff and further define what we are aiming for. I am using Whispers of Chains for reduced damage when near frozen targets, Whispers of Shards for a boost in grenade recharge rates, Whispers of Fissures for an increasement in frozen damage, and Whispers of Hedrons for a weapon boost which will heavily affect the amount of damage we do against enemies with our sidearm. All these fragments will play a major role in terms of better survival while using our gear, as the most of the weapons we are using aren't the best against certain types of enemies, and survival is our highest priority while keeping our stasis chain effect active for as long as possible. If for weapons, we'll be running with the Cryophysia and Grenade Launcher combo for easier freeze and shatter method. This can be changed to something else like a shotgun with better stopping power and spread, or even a fusion rifle with its high damage. This then leaves you with your heavy, and this can be changed to what you feel is best for the setup in general, as anything you pick can go. With my primary, the Cryophysia 77k, this will be working alongside my class abilities on a large scale, and will be the main thing you'll be using alongside your arm colors to get the best of both worlds. While using the exotic trait, we will be activating our fragments that will further aid in our stasis loadout, and while these will have a wide effect in general, I have selected a few fragments that will benefit our weapon on a much larger scale. Whispers of Chains for example will provide us the extra defense we will need when closing the gap against enemies when using our sidearm, and Whisper of Hedrons will provide a damage boost at the same time. With both these in hand, we could be more confident when taking on bigger and tougher enemies without fearing of death around the corner, although death is still going to happen if we get reckless. Now all of this is important as our secondary is a grenade launcher, which is pretty much designed for shattering while our heavy is a sword for close quarter fighting, but it's not something I plan to use all the time. 
With these added buffs going with our upside arm, we can at least put up a fight using that and hopefully integrate it within the build as accordingly. For our secondary, I'm using the Truth Teller with Implosion Bounce, Fill Prep and Demolitionist. And like I mentioned earlier, I'll be using my grenade launcher as a shatter method when I'm at distance or against a large group of enemies at once. I found that the grenade launcher is the best in terms of taking out large groups of enemies at once thanks to their explosive radius, and nothing else has come closer to what they can offer. With the weapon, I've paired it with the glacier grenades to cover more ground, and thanks to the whisper of fissures fragments, we can increase its destructive capability even more, even when our grenade launcher doesn't catch everyone out. With this thought, I have decided to put some points into my discipline stats and also use the demolitions part to gain more grenade energy as I go. With this combination, I can now have 3 option of 3's available for my super, melee and primary, and all of this will greatly benefit the user no matter what you choose first. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Fallen Guillotine Sword with energy transfer and whirlwind blade, and this is more of a personal preference than anything else for the build. Since my build is close range focus, I know I'm going to get into a situation where I will face an enemy who needs more harder hits than what my primary and secondary can offer. This is where I will be using my sword at its highest, while also using my freezing ability to slow their movements down and thus make taking them out easier and quicker. Sometimes I will swap this out for a grenade launcher if the enemies are distance, but this will ultimately depend on what you want in general as any heavy is fine to use. For the stats, we don't need to worry about having a selected group of points available to get the most out of them, considering that we have our fragments a month that are covering this area from start to finish. With this in mind, it allows you to basically invest in whatever you like with no downsides involved. A prime example of this is our strength stat at 50, which we'll be using a lot. This area here would usually be the highest stat available for what I'm going with, but as I have the heavy handed mod attached and the glacier harvest aspect available, we can pretty much avoid putting any points into melee at all, and still be fine from start to finish. One thing to be aware of with the build is that I'm using a mix of charged with light and elemental wells for the large bonuses being offered. This has been working as expected, and the bonuses I get from the two has proven that you can play with a dedicated playstyle without even needing to invest in the needed stats overall. Another prime example of this is my discipline at 60, which will help alongside my melee in creating shards here and there. This area can go even higher if I wish, but thanks to the Whispers of Shards and Demolitions perk, this isn't the case. What I'm trying to show you is how I plan out my builds before delving into them, and how the effects can be tinkered with for the best results. You don't need to go max 100 stats for your gear to get the most out of them, and to be honest, it's something I try to avoid for more freedom in stats rearrangement. What we have here is the basics of the mods, abilities and aspects all working hand in hand, and that's everything you really need to genuinely worry about. Of course, if you have points left over, then invest in whatever. Like I mentioned in my previous videos, stats aren't that highly important compared to mods that can give you a big reward in the mean run. How you go about this will vary from player to player of course. Now onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for, for the build overall. For head, we have minor resilience, dynamo, a sidearm, ammo finder, and elemental charge mod, Arm, we have Strength, Momentum Transfer, and Radio Light Mod. In chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener Times 2, and Element Armors Mod. In leg, we have Minor Discipline, a Sidearm Scavenger, Invigoration, and Heavy Handed Mod. Bond, we have Discipline, Distribution, and Taken Charge Mod. So, a nice and pretty simple build that you can put together with your Warlock or other characters if you wish. The idea of the build is to keep freezing your targets back to back with your abilities and keep your buffs actively moving, which will overall affect your exotics and survival in any content. The idea is pretty simple and straightforward, and doesn't require you to do multiple things just to get something to work. We will mainly be coordinating our freezing abilities with both our double millies and cryophysia to create shards as we go, and these shards will feed back into your melee and keep them topped up. This alone isn't enough for us to keep our melee fully leveled up, however, as the shards don't provide much in terms of energy. Where we will be getting the rest from this is the heavy handed mod once we become charged with light via charged with light mods or the elemental charge mod and elemental armor mod as well. With how I have set it up, we have two ways of becoming charged with light at our will, and whichever one we choose will benefit us nonetheless. If we get charged with light via the elemental world pathway, 
then we can gain an instant 2 charge with lights and some energy to our lowest ability available. I didn't actually expect for the elemental charge mods to work as intended and I would have been happy to switch it out, but I noticed it does proc a lot which is exactly what I need to make the build work. Once we are charged with light, every time I use my charge melee, I will gain a half back as a refund and thus as long as we get kills and proc the needed mods etc, we can have infinite melee on hand and a sidearm that can insta freeze at our command. This is what I would consider is an upgrade to the past stasis version but with a better synergy and accessibility for users. You don't need to have the same aspects and fragments like I do and that's what I really like about the stasis subclass in general. We have even more ways of customizing our builds without the need of mods or exotics but by adding in these extra features we can gain an even better loadout compared to what the light subclasses can offer. I do hope we see the same thing for light subclasses in the near future as well. Now the build is going to be most effective in PvE content with loads of enemies around so that the build can flex its wings a bit. Stuff like Gambit, Strikes, Nightfalls as long as you're not Grandmasters and Dungeons are where you'll get the most fun out of it. Now please do be aware that the build is great for close quarter fighting but it's terrible against condensed and toughened enemies with high health and damage such as the ones in Nightfall ordeals. Although I have given you a damage buff and extra damage reduction around frozen targets, that should help with better survival. Most enemies can still wipe you out in a matter of seconds, so for this if you plan to go a step higher in content level, do be sure to look into making your secondary and heavy as hard hitting as possible but not take away from the overall feel of the build. This is the only downside to the build that you as a player will generally come across. Overall the build isn't anything new that you're not familiar with, but it does offer a proper way to fully play into the status build fantasy with a dedicated weapon of that subgroup that we never were able to do so before unless you enjoy using Salvation's Grip. Once we get more status weapons I can see the build being capable of expanding which endgame content it can then play in and when it does, I'll definitely cover that in the future. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Typhoon 2 content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.